All right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to hop into our webinar today. Uh, this is for the pre-built ML and Estima new release that was sent out yesterday. And just for a clarity, a reminder, um, this is for version 4.13.2.3508 would be this version that we're talking about today. I uh, got a, quite a quite a number of different features that we're going to go over and and show that we've sent out in this release and made available. So excited to do that. Just as we get started, uh, just a reminder that you have in your webinar controls you should have a chat feature. I'll even put a little chat in there now uh, that you should see pop up. But if you have questions or um, uh, things that you're wondering about more in relationship to these features or other questions you might have, feel free to put those into the chat. And if we can get to some of those uh, during the webinar, we will. Uh, otherwise, we can also just follow up with you afterward as well. So uh, you can find that in the, in the control tools for the webinar. So getting started, uh, there's uh, several things that we want to reference uh, over here in the core of pre-built MLX or Estima, uh, as far as some of the tools in the, the project and lists and so on. Uh, so we're going to come back to that. So just want to make sure that you're aware that we are coming back here. But before we do that, I wanted to hop over to uh, some of the features that we've added in that are related to more the hub side, the, the companion uh, project tracker. And of course, I will just note here, for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with Hub, uh, encourage you to find more out more about that. Uh, we're happy to give you more specifics on what that tool is and, and what's all involved. But I'm just going to open up Hub here. So one of the things that we pointed out in the release uh, notes that we sent out to you was the new reporting and metrics capabilities that we've added in. Uh, and that's in relationship to the Hub project tracking feature. So if we come over here to uh, the upper right hand corner of the hub window uh, where you'd be able to ask, access your account information and other uh, other similar items, I'm going to come to the account and then here on that this sort of back section where you can control different things about your team and so on, we have this new new button here or this new tab called reports and when you pull that up you'll see a couple of initial reports just a couple of initial screens that are about your work personally so who as, as you're logged into hub these would be just about you so you're currently active projects to seeing what is uh what your quick breakdown is of what's currently going on for you you know what's logged in and if you mouse over these it will give you the specific numbers and percentages and so on you know so currently we have about 23 projects, or I have currently 23 projects that are assigned to me in some way. They're in these various stages of logged in and progress and revisions. Uh, and then also I have kind of a chart down here to see just my comparison of how I'm doing this week versus, you know, just what how, what, what I was doing last week. Uh, last week for me, I didn't do any projects. So that's what the report I'm showing here. Whereas this week, as far as what I've actually completed in this in this time period, uh, I have two done so far this week. So it's just kind of a quick sketch of, uh, of what's going on for you as the user who's logged in. Uh, but then up at the top, you'll see that we have this additional button. And this is actually where more the lion's share of the reporting capabilities and metrics that uh, you are you can access. So if you click that button, uh, that's going to take you out uh, to uh, this reporting site. Now, you may have already been out here to this website, the hub, the, the web page related to hub. Uh, and for if you were entering some information for data storage or things like that. Uh, so perhaps you've been out here. I suspect you probably haven't yet. Uh, but out here is this reports tab. So kind of a similar <clears throat> concept to what you saw on Hub Desktop, but now it's much, much more expanded. Lots of opportunities here to collect information about uh, what's going on with your projects and historically and what's currently happening. So at the top of it, you can see we've got this projects, uh, this date range set. Currently it's set to January, but I could set this back to something else, say, Let's say I wanted a longer range, like for December 6, perhaps. Click search, and it's going to pull up <clears throat> that data for that time range. And you can see I've got this timeline across the top. It's going to show me what's going on in relationships to <clears throat> during that pro that period, uh, how many projects were created, how many projects were completed, and what how many projects perhaps were due if due dates had been set for those. So you can see the trend lines that are going along there. And of course, if you mouse over them, you can see those for those different weeks. 
up here in the right hand corner, you can see you can show by or we, I also say aggregate the data by week. Uh, this will change depending on the date range. It will change by default, giving you a reasonable level, but you can also adjust it yourself. So if we wanted to see, we prefer to see this more by month, how things are gathered together, we could view it by month. You know, So here's generally what on, went on in December, here's what on, went on in January, and here's what currently is happening in February so far. So you have controls over there. And then of course, different filters up here like you'd be used to in, in, in other experiences online that you've have, have done, I'm sure. Uh, you can. Uh, other filters you can set would be the statuses of the job, as well as the different team members that are on your team. If you wanted to run reports that were more specific to just the salespeople or just the estimators, if you were wanting to dial in and understand a little better what's going on there. Uh, further down, you have another section of pie charts, uh, again, just giving you visibility on the data. Uh, so here we've got, I'm going to set this back to January. Let's say that I wanted to see, hey, what's going on in the month, what happened in the month of January, just sort of looking backward on We'll set the dates from January to February 1st, hit the search bar. And now I can take a look and you can see the date range above, meaning this date range here applies to the project created date or the projects active, like if they were in, in process, they had been started or they were completed or uh, set to revisions or things like that. Um, or, <clears throat> and then you also have the completed date. So I can set these you know, any way I want. So if I wanted to see completed date, I wanted to see, okay, during that time period, how, how many projects were uh, completed? And there were four projects I can see here. And then I can see you know, who was doing what. Okay, so three of them Chris did, I did one of them. Uh, or you could set these to be how many projects were created during this time period. You know, and now we can see, okay, this is how many were created. And by the way, this is where they're at. You know, we still have three projects that are still only logged in, two that are in sales review, and then one that's over in revisions. So lots of different ways that you can view that data. Uh, finally, down to this lower section here is pointing out that all of that data, whatever you run the report for up here, uh, then you have sort of just that hard list or just more of the raw data, if you want to think of it that way, down here listed out in this table. And then you can export that out to a, a CSV file. So you could take that out if you wanted to do, do more with that information, uh, slice and dice it in a different way. Uh, you certainly have access to do that as well. So lots of flexibility back here. Um, then you also notice across the top, so right now we're, we're defaulting to is information about your projects. Uh, so like we've just explored here, you know, who's doing what, what's in progress, what's still coming up and, and things like that. Then there's this new tab <clears throat> that this isn't active yet. It's coming soon, but just to point out that that is something that will also be expanding this reporting capability too. And this would be rated, related to product, in, <clears throat> product information across your different jobs so that you could get a feel for, okay, how much, how much siding am I specifying or how much um, lumber am I specifying and, and being able to see, have a clearer picture of how much stuff that you're actually estimating and bidding on. Uh, so you have a, maybe a better feel for uh, what you should be seeing on your return ratios. So uh, that's still coming. I'm looking to get that out here in the, in the, in the coming weeks. So I'll be watching for that. So again, the way that you would get to that is popping back over here to hub. Um, you would just go, here's the standard view, come up here to the right-hand corner, click on your account screen. And then you have the report options where you can see that thumbnail sketch, sketch of just your personal uh, productivity and just a feel for what's going on there. But then the custom reports tab will uh, button up here will take you out to that other website where you can uh, dive into those uh, information further for your team and the things that are going on. A um, couple other things about Hub, and then we'll jump back over into the main MLX section uh, that we added. <clears throat> Previously, when you sent out, a, when a job was set to uh, sales review, so that you and your salespeople that were set up with that particular job, uh, they would get an email notifying them that, hey, you've got a job. Um, <clears throat> There was there was a there's a job that you've you know needs needs of your review and that email would have looked something kind of like this here, uh, but based on some user feedback, uh, we uh, added in to this email this notification email a link 
right here. And from that link, your salespeople would now be able to download the output files. So if you completed a job in Hub, you posted the PDFs of the different materialists and framing layouts, and you had you basically sent them off to review. Uh, so of course, we encourage your, your salespeople to get the phone app and make, make, make use of just being able to be right in Hub and get that information. Uh, but if that isn't working fit for their workflow and they just want to just be able to, you know, get this email and just pull down those files, then they can click this link here and this will take them over to uh, <clears throat> this site here or this page. It will take them to a, a very specific page for your, that particular project. And when they get to that page, they, of course, have information up top of what that project is, who the estimator is working on, what the salesperson is, and what the status of that job is. And then here are all the posted files, all the output files that were, have been posted for that project. So here's the PDFs, the direct ship list, and things that I posted for this particular job. I can download these individually, or if I have all of these checked, or I can just check the ones that I want, I can choose to download the selected files and those will pull down as a zip folder and I can get those and put them on my local machine. So that is a team setting that you can set up. I'll point out, so this isn't on by default. So if this is something that is you think would be useful for the people that you are, um, your salespeople and might be allow them to interact with you more, they maybe they just don't want to use Hub directly. They just want to be delivered the files, but you still want the convenience of being able to work in Hub and have files and stuff delivered to them automatically. Then you would just come here into the hub, come back over here to your account tab. And on the Teams setting, there's a new section down here for Teams settings. And one of the, the first checkbox that's here is available is to include project website link and sales review status change email. Essentially, uh, you know, allowing that web link um, to be in the email so that your salespeople, when they get that notification, uh, they would be able to go and grab those files. So with that, gonna hop back over to the core MLX section now uh, to a few other features that were added in. Uh, over here in the projects tab, coming over to the list tab where we have our different lists of material, uh, we've added in the ability for you to uh, rename packs in a bulk way. So previously, if you right click on a pack name, you could choose rename pack and then you would have to, you could come here and you could um, specifically rename that particular pack. Uh, but based on user feedback, you know, if you had a, a bunch of packs that you were needing to rename, there's now a bulk method for that. So I can either right click on the list up here or even just on the pack again, and I can choose the option for rename, in this case, house pack, since that's the name of the list. And when I do that, I get a window that pops up and now I can actually rename all of these at once. So I could come here and I can say, you know, one floor, um, one wall, two floor, two wall. You know, so quickly I can just rename stuff the way that I want it. Click OK and then those pack names and stuff will be applied. So again, the way that you would access that is either by right clicking on the pack or on the list name and you would choose the rename house packs or rename whatever the list name is of packs and it's gonna pull up that window. Shifting over to the quick check feature, uh, there was uh, a desire for from some organization to um, being able to flag uh, users when there's something that is really wrong, you know, not just like, hey, you might want to look at this, but like, we like, if this is a problem, then we really know that you shouldn't send any output at all. And so we've changed, we've added an additional level of warning in the quick check feature, all that's under your control. Uh, but if we come to the settings tab, I'm going to come here to this roof decking rule that we have here. And, and if you have any questions on how to use the quick check feature, I will I will just make a note right now. The goal of the quick check feature is that this should be a tool that is customized to your preferences. You can have it be as detailed as you want, or maybe you just want it to check for two things and that's it. Um, but the goal is for you to heighten the accuracy of your takeoffs without really spending any extra time on it. It'll help catch errors and things and mistakes that you might make just because we're all human and we you know, occasionally make those mistakes from time to time that we just didn't catch on the way on before it goes out the door. But if you ever come to this roof decking mist, I'm gonna click on the edit button. 
there's the severity level. You know, basically, what's the what type of rule is this? Uh, previously, we had info warning and error, and those would just display those different ways. The behavior wasn't necessarily any different. It was just giving you an idea of how important that warning was. Uh, but now down here, we have this additional level called violation. Uh, and this actually does have different behavior if you set this. So we're going to set this roof decking to a violation, you know, because maybe we're, we just say that, hey, for our types of projects, we never send out roof decking uh, or send a job out without roof decking. It just basically doesn't happen. Uh, so we, we could set that at that level. Now, you can see if we run the quick check rules, we are getting this error that, hey, in the alternate building, we missed the roof decking. So right now, if I hit Control-P to pull up the report, uh, I'm going to get this warning that says, hey, quick, you know, you've, you've missed some things. Now, you might be used to seeing this window, but you'll notice what's different about it is we've got this warning message here. And notice that there's, there's no way to bypass this anymore because this violation level is here. So if I click OK, at this point, I'm going to have to deal with this particular issue. So I can either dismiss it, you know, if I just know that I don't want to, or perhaps the more correct solution in this case would be to come to the list tab, come to alternate building, come to roof, and let's even add some roof decking in, right? So we take care of that. I'll hit control P again. And now I still get that message because there's a few other errors I hadn't taken care of, but notice that the violation level is gone. It's been taken care of. And since there's no more violations that have been set, I can choose to continue with errors and go on to my report if I want to now. Now, if you want this to work effectively, as far as within your organization of this, or to you to be preventing you from producing output when you know that you don't want to be, if you come to the tools tab and settings, you'll need to make sure that this run quick check rules before opening the framing layouts and reports that this is turned on. This has already been here, um, and this is the default is for it to be on. But some some users may have chosen to turn it off because they're not using the feature right now. But just be aware if you're trying to make use of that violation, you'll want to make sure that that user setting is turned on, and it is a user setting uh, for each individual user's machine. So those the that's again in summary that's the the uh, quick check rules uh, introducing the idea of having a violation level. Uh, continuing further on to the idea of framing layouts, we made a few tweaks and adjustments there for those who are, who are trying to just get a little bit more or more specific on what they want showing on their framing layout materials or framing layout uh, view. I'm going to pull up this framing layout that I've already created. Take a quick look at it. Yeah, we'll continue with those errors. And you'll notice down here in the corner, we've got notes added, which is not new. We've been able to do that. So this is just generally what this looks like. Okay. So, but now I'm going to come over here to the profile tab. And for those of you who may not be aware, if you want to adjust how your framing layouts look, you know, what comes with them, what doesn't, if you come to the profile tab, come to general, down here in this section of framing layouts, of course, you can adjust the disclaimer and other logos and things that might be added on uh, how high your capture resolution is. If you're having problems with grainy framing layouts, so you can maybe you want to set that to very high instead of medium. But over here in the framing layout styles, so this is the like the different page pages that you might have your framing layouts be displayed on. I'm going to come to the 11 by 17 detailed, click on the edit button. And if you haven't been back here before, uh, this is where you can control a lot of what does show on that framing layout. So if you want more or less stuff, you can make those changes and adjustments here. And there's quite a bit of flexibility here of what you can actually do and how you have stuff displayed. Uh, but three new checkboxes that are here. One is show the type of note indicator, show note title. So you can choose to turn those both off now. Those always used to show, but now you have control over whether they show or not. And then you also have the show printed date. So essentially, this would be like the day that you actually printed off that framing layout when it, when it was actually created. So I'll click that checkbox, click OK. And now let's come back to that framing layout that we were looking at before. We'll just look at it one more time. You can see I have it selected up here as far as layout styles, 11 by 17 detailed. Down here on the notes, you'll see that the title is missing since I had unchecked that box, as well as the section over here that would say what type of note it is. So if you prefer your notes to look like this, you know, no particular title and just an items to reference and pictures or or other things like that, then you have that flexibility now. And then down here in the lower right hand corner, this printed date is now showing. So this would be obviously today's date since that's the day that we're actually running off this framing layout. 
So you have the add option to turn that on now. Uh, finally, over in the plan tab, another tool that we've introduced, again, uh, based on user feedback. Uh, some people were wanting to have a better feel for how much square footage of containers that they had drawn in a particular project or on a specific page. More just, uh, just kind of a, a general check of what was going on and stuff that they had drawn. So we've introduced just a couple of simple tools that you access through some keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so one of them is the ability to see how much square footage of containers that you've drawn in the in the entire project. So the keyboard control sh uh, shortcut, and I'll show you these in a moment, but the shortcut is control alt S and that will pull up this little report right here. Uh, and so you can see it says the plan square foot information. So this is all the stuff associated with the plan tab. So any floor areas, in this case, 24,000 square feet, roof areas, so those would be the pitched containers, and then the area areas. Now, we also know right here that this is the flat dimensions. So these aren't pitch adjusted, it's more just as they're sitting flat on the page. Uh, so that's the total areas that are drawn in this entire project. But some of you also, some people also wanted to know how, how much square footage did I draw on a particular page? Uh, so I can come to this, I can even come to, um, let's see here, let's come to this different building right here. You know, so I wanted to know how much square footage is on this page that I drew. Instead of hitting the Control Alt S, I'm going to do Control Alt R, and that's going to pull up this alternate report. Notice that the title says floor plan, different building square foot info, which is the name of this page. So this is how much square footage is on that particular page. So whatever digitizer you have selected, if you have multiple digitizers open, whatever page is currently showing, when you run that, then that will show you what it is. In this case, I have only I have 3,000 square feet of floor in this particular floor area, and then the roof is zero and the area is zero, resulting in that total. So again, if I go to a different page, run that same control R, now I'm going to get a different report, 1189. Again, uh, no roof or areas in this particular case. The way that you would know about those uh, keyboard shortcuts, if I come to the tools and settings, uh, hotkeys up here, uh, further down in this section for the plan, You'll see that there's show plan square footage info is control alt R, show plan square footage info. Sorry, the first one was page, the second one is plan, uh, R, R versus S. And of course, you could adjust those if you wanted them to be something different. So that brings us to kind of the end of the summary of the different features that we've rolled out in, in this latest version. Again, that version, uh, for your reference, is 4.13.2.3508. And thanks for taking the time to join us. And if you're aware of anybody else that uh, needs to still hear or see this webinar or somebody in your organization, we will have a recording available. So just shoot us an email and we are happy to provide you a, a link to that recording as well. So thanks so much for joining us. Have a good afternoon.